Welcome to the third in our series of five short videos looking at labour market economics and how you can use labour demand and labour supply to score great analysis marks in your exams. This time we'll spend a few minutes thinking about inward migration, inward migration of labour from one country to another and ask this question using uh, labour demand and supply diagrams, how can we analyse the impact of high net inward migration on a particular labour market? Well, this would obviously could, could be a macro diagram in which case you might want to be thinking about aggregate demand and supply analysis. But we think about the labour market here, and in particular, let's consider occupations, industries, where migration can have quite, quite a big effect. You think about uh, health and social care, construction, uh, food and catering, uh, travel and hospitality, and uh, things like uh, farming, where labour can labour is often in short supply, and where migration if it's high net inward migration would typically cause an outward shift in the labour supply curve, which other things remaining the same, or catalyst powers, will cause a fall in wages, uh, but a rise in employment. And that will be a perfectly, perfectly good standard diagram to draw, showing migration increasing the labour supply from LS1 to LS2 and driving down the equilibrium wage in the market. Good stuff, nothing wrong with that. However, I, I'm trying to encourage my students this year in their exams to build or develop their analysis diagrams, often at the start of an essay, because it's my view that developed diagrams lead to better analysis, and better analysis certainly um, promotes stronger evaluation. So what might happen, for example, if you have very high net migration into certain occupations, in theory that might be enough for a given level of labour demand to drive equilibrium wages perhaps below the nation's legal pay floor. What I've done here is I've uh, shifted the supply curve out quite a long way from LS1 to LS2. I've also made the labour supply curve a little bit more elastic. The idea being that uh, uh, if there's a continuous, a strong flow of people coming into the economy in terms of net migration, it may well make the labour supply to certain occupations more elastic. Not a, dra not a drastic change, but a little subtle shift in the curve. And that drives wages down to W2. Well, uh, that's fine. But it could be the case that in some sectors that could drive wages below a formal pay floor. Of course, that raises issues to do with uh, compliance, enforcement and uh, the cost of enforcing and complying with national minimum wage legislation. It's just an idea. It just develops the diagram and helps the evaluation. You might also consider the demand side effects of migration. Uh, people coming in, migrants uh, earn money. And they spend money, they create demand for goods and services. And that obviously depends on how many come in, what the average wage is, and the extent to which, for example, they stay in a country, uh, perhaps to raise a family or to stay to work after they've studied. Uh, oftentimes, uh, migrant workers might have a, quite a high propensity to spend, in which case the demand side effects might be high, or they might send uh, a substantial amount of their earnings in remittances to the country of origin. Either way, build this into your diagram. So there was our initial diagram showing an increase in labour supply, but there might also be a demand side effect for migrants, uh, which of course increased spending increases the demand for labour in certain uh, occupations, be it uh, what have you, healthcare or housing, education and so on. In which case there might be a rise in employment and a little bit of a higher wage increase. Labour migration into an economy in labour markets has both a demand and the supply side effect. And you can certainly also build this into your analysis at a macroeconomic economic level as well. We'll spend a few minutes looking at outward migration in the next video.